Well good morning everyone, so this morning I've just painted this cow because I need to draft her out, she's going to the works, truck's coming at 9, I've got two others that are getting drafted out as well, there's three going in total, but the reason she's going is quite frankly because she's just not given enough milk, so she must have had mastitis in this quarter, uh, the left rear at some point because there's not really much there, and what I did I just tuck, chucked a test bucket on it this morning to see how much milk she's giving. So we'll let that fill up and have a look when she's done. I've also booked this girl in here, 130. She's one of my favourite cows, but unfortunately she got mastitis in this front quarter up here and it's blind, so it's not giving any milk. And this back quarter is just full of sort of uh, mastitis -y sort of stuff. Unfortunately she ripped her teat, so you can see the teat end. There is no teat end on it and it doesn't hold the milk in, so when she gets full it just squirts out. And herself she's sitting at about 4.6 million on the last herd test last season so it's just time for her to go that is outrageously high you want it under about 150,000 so it's well exceeded that the reason I kept her through the winter and didn't color at the end of last season was because she was in calf to six semen so I really wanted to get another heifer out of her I've got one that's milking this year that she had a couple of years ago and I was lucky enough to get one but she's finished so it is a bit hard to tell how much milk's in there so what I'm going to do for you guys is grab this bucket that is sitting right there it's empty, what I'm going to do is tip that in there it's probably like 10 litres maybe if that it's a 20 litre bucket so I would say 20 litres would be up to about that rim there and halfway would be somewhere about there so she's just not producing very well at all. One, two, three. Ah, 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 ah. Here's another one that's going. This is the same mark. But remember 297 the other day, which I thought was getting milk fever? Turns out it wasn't. She just got real bad mastitis, which I've just picked up. So she'll be treated. Usually for mastitis, I use as pen clocks, but for this one, because there was a front quarter that looked a little bit gunky too, I'm going to use Pentheject. It's mainly used for cows that have got more than one quarter that's bad but I find works real well so it comes in two bottles that's a powdery solution and then this is a liquid and what you do is just get the solution from this one and put it in the other one once you've done that there's enough for three days in this bottle give it a quick shake so all that powder mixes in and then I think it's 20 mils uh, day one 20 mils yes and then all you do is just inject it into her sorry Gil that you'll feel better, you'll feel much better. Here's the last cow to draft out right here. Last row, too. Come on, girl, other side. Really annoying though this morning, overflowed the receiving can. I was cupping on to, and I got to about here and I looked up and that was just full of milk. And I ran out here to the milk lift pump and what had happened was that this pin here that holds the motor on had slid out and the belt wasn't turning. So it was spinning but the belt wasn't turning which means no milk was going anywhere. We've had a bit of a problem with our pump so if you can hear a knocking sound it's from one of these arms back here, but it's been looked at and it's fine. They said they can't do anything about it. It just is what it is, so it'll make that knocking sound, but it's not too bad. We had actually bought another double header milk pump off Brad down the road, 
put it in and it seized up after about two weeks so had to pull that out lucky enough it was at the end of milking so it wasn't too bad where just while the water was going through and dad had also bought another one before that and it was an imperial so that didn't work either so we're going back to the tried and tested one that we had it's just annoying because it makes that knocking sound and you can hear it from the pit so one of the things that we are going to do or we'll probably look at upgrading somewhere in probably the new year is getting rid of the double header and going to a milkland pump which will sit out in the pit there just below the receiving can That's all three of them drafted out, so those two there actually slip, so they're not giving any milk at the moment. And they need to go. But the new pump would sit somewhere in here, a centrifugal one that is variable speed. So what that means is that when this fills up, it'll pump very, real slow, real slow, and then once it sort of gets fuller, it'll pump faster and pump more milk through. Dad likes the four headers that we've got at the moment because they pump foam and those new ones sort of don't pump them as well they've got to put a little nozzle in the receiving can to spray the foam which tends to work alright I hear so hopefully we'll be looking at that in the new year and by doing it it just means we can get rid of this whole system here which will sort of tidy up this wall so all that'll be in here is just sort of the milk filter and the plate cooler which would be awesome let these girls go so I just held them on here on the feed pad this morning there's just a little bit of feed that I wanted them to clean up and they have done so they can go the weather's changed so there's a big weather bomb coming in and hitting the South Island this week looks like they're gonna get a heap of rain I don't think we're supposed to get much it's supposed to sort of miss most of us which isn't too bad but it's really nice because it's warmed up big time so it is overcast but it's really warm we were getting down to sort of ones to, well it was actually minus two the other morning bit of a good frost so i don't mind these overcast days because it's warm and it gets the grass growing even a little bit of rain probably wouldn't hurt at the moment either dad should have let those cows go at the cow shed by now i think i can still see them in that yard we'll just set this up for them It's about 8 30 so the truck won't be too far away like i say they're usually pretty early i'm guessing it'll just be a truck too i don't know why they'd be running around with trailers on taking cows to the works at the moment but we'll soon find out can't forget my bit of paper either i ordered another animal status declaration book the other day and they have gotten bigger so they've put this new bit on the bottom saying that they've all got their nate tags uh, and if there are animals there which are unsafe to tag you're supposed to mark them down as well so just a little bit more paperwork he probably could have let them go 10 minutes ago but however that's all good the truck has arrived he's over there at the moment what oh, do you think they're running straight on the truck it's going well so far come on in i hate this section need to do something about it Get up! Get up! Where you go? Come on! Where you go? In the yard. In the yard. Come on! Should run on pretty good. Up you go! Hey! Hey! Up you go! Easy as. Those cows are off to the works down in Tikawiti at UBP, that's where we send most of our cattle. And what will happen to them? Because a lot of people ask what do happen to the cull cows, so they will get culled today, probably around lunchtime I'm guessing, maybe sooner if they're not busy. 
and they will probably go into hamburger meat or it will go into mince which will get made into hamburger meat I think quite a lot maybe might go to McDonald's I'm not 100% sure on that these girls are happy they're just on the new grass cleaning up the last paddock of it I was saying how I really want to get a new trough for this paddock and put it down the bottom here and while I'm at it though I want to put a new trough up the top there so the cows sort of come, uh, I usually fence it up there and they come in here one half and, and that side the other. But the trough for that paddock is way over there. So what I have to do is just run a new water line around and put it around there a little bit. It's a little bit flatter, just make it a little bit easier. Then I could sort of fence it and leave the fence up instead of having to do it every time. Not that it's really much of a big deal, but it would just be easier if the cows didn't have to walk back and forth from there all the time. But this is the paddock that I lease, so this is actually our boundary right here. And I have asked Buck if I can put a new trough in it. He said, go, go for it, do whatever you want. So hopefully maybe sometime this summer I'll, I'll look at doing that. Our resident builder's also back today. Mike, he's uh, sort of finished all he can on the shed at the moment, eh? Yeah, till the iron turns up. Yeah, which should be Friday, hopefully. Yep. See if it does though. Yeah, and then we'll do the concreting in one bay first and add the sides and the roof. And concrete's Tuesday next week. Yeah. Um, but yeah, today he is just working with some iron. So this iron came off Dad's tractor shed up the top there. And we're repurposing it because he is... Recycling. Recycling it. Recycling. I guess. Because we are putting it on the outside of this little red shed that we have. Survive that. Cut it to that six inch and six inch. Yep. Um, do something like that and then uh, do a small trimming around the window and then put a face on here as well. A, a, probably a four by one. Yep. And same with up the door side, uh, four by one trimming on there as well. And then it'll all be tidy. What do you reckon this stuff is? Well, I reckon it's Remu. Do you? Yeah, because the piece I cut the other day is Remu. Well, that's Remu. You see how rich that is. Yeah. Oop. I mean, that's that's a and the weight of it. I mean, it's it's, it's heavy. It's, oh, well, that's that is that is real heavy. That'd be a couple of kilos, probably you know, three kilos. And that's only a small little block. Good for the fire. See how red it is. That's New Zealand hardwood. That stuff. Yeah. Oh, well, that's real so, heavy. So yeah, it's pretty good. But this wouldn't be Remu, would it? The the boarding. Yeah, I reckon it is. You reckon that is Remu? Hundred percent. Oh yeah. Hundred percent. Even, even that, you know, it's it's red. It's definitely Remu. Well, that's pretty cool. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm happy with that. Yeah, yeah it's I'm looking real good. Got to cut a little strip to uh, fit in there, and um, it'll it'll just come down to one corrugation. It's really going to annoy the birds now. This was just an infestation of birds' nests, really, this shed, because there were just holes everywhere. But. They're not going to get in there now. You can see just in here all the birds' nests that were there. And up the top there, just packed full of them. So it's amazing they put these little ass windows in these sheds. I don't know what we're going to do with that. Either put plexiglass in there or get another bit of glass. There's another little window in here too. That's glass. But if you're wondering why we're going to so much effort to save this little red shed when you think you could just rip it down considering you've got a massive new shed going up here that is because quite purely I like my history so I can happily sit inside and watch an hour long documentary on Napoleon invading Russia <laughs> but I quite like the New Zealand history too and this was well I think it's probably one of the last things that was come from the Patarangi Creamery which is about six kilometres down the road it was the old, I think they called it the power shed or the generator shed 
I'm not sure. And and to put a time date on this, what do you reckon Mike could be over maybe over a hundred years? Be close to a hundred years probably. Right. What do you reckon the shed would be? How old? Yeah, you'd be around 100, eh? So what we're doing, well, at the moment, is pretty much just preserving it. So these are probably the original warboards that are on here, and you can see they have rotted out big time. They weren't treated back when it was <laughs> built. Well, they used this red oxide paint, which sort of helped. But we're just replacing, or well, not replacing, but we're just sort of covering up all the holes to sort of weatherproof it just a little bit more. And it's looking real neat. Once Mike puts a trim back around here, it'll look even better. He did put a new roof on it. So that's a brand new roof up there. Uh, last summer he put that on because the other one had sort of rusted through. I see the gutter. We'll probably pull that down. We don't really need a gutter there anymore. But I think it's quite neat to sort of keep these things. It's really nice on the inside here, minus all the bird poo. Sort of used as just a tool shed, but it is cool. Pop and his nephew, which was Ian, who used to farm here, they went and picked it up. I'm not sure when I can. Maybe. Well, they bought this. Or Ian bought this farm in the 50s. So, so any time after that, the late 50s, early 60s, they went and picked it up. I think on the back of a truck, and then and then bought it here, and it's sat here ever since. So I think it's really cool to to, to keep these things around. Like I say, it's probably the only thing from the creamery that's that's still left. The original one burnt down, it's not actually there anymore. But there are a lot of creameries around the certain areas around here because it's quite a predominant dairy area back in the day. There are a lot of little sort of micro creameries um, and butterworks and, and stuff like that until they sort of cooperated all the farmers into one big co-op later in the, the, the 1900s, I guess. Had my truckload of sand turn up the other day, which there's probably only half a truckload of sand there now. Because as you've seen, I put some of it in that hole. We buried the cable that was there. And this is looking much better. I think I did a reasonable job. So when we concrete this bay here, the truck should be able to back straight up into here. And that's the other concrete. I'm still smoothing it out. Got a little bit left to go. Damo came out earlier on and he said he's bringing his barbecue out on Tuesday. So the concreting is going to have a cooked lunch. So it should be a bit of fun. Mike's all finished up for the day though, and he's got pretty much this wall complete as well. I think he's just got one more little strip to run up there, and then he's got to do the back, or the other side wall I guess, which is a little bit niggly, he's got to cut around the window and, and other stuff I guess like that, cut around that. It's quite a hard case though, because when he raids the back corner, this door shuts properly now, and the latch is a little bit loose so I need to move that nail there used to be oh there still is a little bit of a hole up there but there used to be a massive hole that the birds flew through you can see how it's not or well, this door's not quite straight although it is at the bottom <laughs> so it's much better than it was I was thinking it's going to look pretty cool too because the iron on the side here is pretty much the same colour of the iron that's going to be put on this shed so it's going to tie together quite well and uh, look the part I reckon but uh, I've just been racing around trying to get stuff done. You'll find out why next week, probably, in next week's video. But I uh, had a bit of a haircut last night, so it looked like a racing snake. Went for a number three all over. I always cut my own hair. Just saves a, saves a few dollars going to the hairdressers. And uh, clean that carving bed up as well, so looking very tidy. But I hope you enjoyed the video, guys. And if you did, like always, give it a thumbs up. That'd be awesome. And apart from that, see you next time.